The body is the shore on the ocean of being. That's a Sufi quote. And let's go. Let's start. Welcome to today's video. I am guided and empowered and energized to give more, to deliver more lessons to school. So what you're going to see is that you will always have your access to school and to the workshops and to the Reiki course and to the healing programs. And I'm just going to keep on, you know, distilling new things. And I'm excited about that. I'm also purely guided. So while I thought that it was time for me to create a light language course, the journey is actually deeper than that. And it's about, you know, just giving here and there a lot of different teachings that I encounter in my life and that I've encountered for a long time. So whenever you see me share anything, it's because I've spent a good amount of time with it. It's been proved and assimilated within my being for at least nine, nine months, at least nine months and, and, and even more than that. Today is about the body. It's about that quote that I just mentioned. The body is the shore on the ocean of being. We are everything and we are God experiencing itself. We are those sparks that the source sent out to experience, to, to experience all of the different tints of life, all of the different layers, all of the different shades and that body is what we can refer to as a map to understanding ourselves but the body is so much bigger than what you expect. There's the physical body but there's also the being and the bodies, the energy bodies with the different layers and they don't always make sense, it's true, and they don't always come through in very clear words and so as someone who's been understanding intuitively that there's something to this there's something to my thyroid being in my throat there's something to my thymus being just here there's something to the lymph the lymphatic system and the lymph moving through there's something to everything i'm trying to piece together through different modalities, whether it's traditional Chinese medicine, whether it's Reiki, whether it's learning everything about, you know, the medicine and the anatomy of our body or just anything else. And I wanted to share today that understanding and that experiencing, because if you've done my Reiki class, then you remember that we brushed our fingers, we pressed our hand chakras, and then we felt the energy that happens between those two and whether you activated yourself through my different chakra healing programs where we talked about the root, the sacral and all of the other chakras we always refer to something happening within that physical and lately last year I gave two rounds of light language classes which were a series of four different initiations and teachings and experiencing of there's a very beautiful bird who just, who just arrived next to my flowers. It's so cute. And he's gone. Um, so that, that real understanding through light language of what is happening within the yin part of our body and the yang part of our body and that merging between what we've learned throughout this life where we have to control and create boundaries and, and restrict that flow of creativity that we all have within so the balancing of those two energies those two polarities masculine feminine and finding that androgynous self and and finding that expression and that freedom that liberation in your self-expression and that journey through the body is continue with the transpersonal chakras it continues with understanding like the other parts, the back of the heart, the back of your shoulders, the back of the throat, the back of the head, understanding what is above your head, what is underneath your feet, and just really understanding that the body is not just what is controlled by your skin right now. It's within, it's without, and it's even above the atmosphere with the still gateway, with the different chakras that inhibit your consciousness, your incarnation in this body. And so 
I offered a few lessons for free on YouTube where I talked about light language. So I have a series of little videos and the last one is called toning. And it's all about using the body to sense the body and to go beyond. So it's an experience in making sound through an open mouth or a closed mouth and understanding, feeling just like a sound bath, the vibration that happens, how it ripples through your body and how you can set a frequency for you to inhabit and remember that throughout the day. It's also something that has to do with the different responses that we can have to difficult moments, like the fight and flight and the freeze and phone responses. And the body registers, the body is filled with information. Every time I see a client, I see someone that I do energy work with, every time I see a friend of mine that asks me for Reiki, I'm clear sentient, I feel through my body. So this is even more, you know, <laughs> related to the body, but there's a lot of lack of flow. So little things that stay in places and that don't move and flow and evolve. They stay stuck in things that have been shocked. And I've worked for years helping people to understand those, you know, bubbles, those pockets of energy that were not really moving and how to really just like sift through them and see what is the core of that and heal that together. And that that is very interesting because you experience a world that not many people talk about or barely anyone. And then you find out that there's actual scientific studies about what happens in our body when we come across those traumatic events that necessitate a response from us, those four Fs, the fight, flight, freeze and phone. So today I want to talk about this. I want to talk about the reality that trauma lives inside of your body. There's a very famous book called The Body Keeps the Score that a lot of people talk about and I always understood that maybe I should read that but I felt like it was going to be very heavy and very intense and also kind of a repetition of all the different things that I've read about because I've read about trauma so much because I'm surviving that. I'm, I'm, I'm fighting for my life. I'm fighting for my sanity. I'm, I've been trying to repair myself from my childhood for years and there's a lot of things that helped and there's a lot of things that are, you know, that work together. There's a lot of things that work for me and don't work for others. And there's a lot of things that are still missing. So I'm pairing alternative medicine with therapy, psychology, and understanding of all of that with shadow work, with my psychic journey, with different healers, different professionals, just working through everything, working through as much as I can with what happened to me, which isn't easy. And I know I'm not the only one. Across the years, I've gathered a lot of resources and in a way, all my videos are offerings and explorations of all of the things that could be helping you. Some things are not going to resonate with you at all. Just drop it. And some things are going to be like, huh, oh, yeah, <laughs> that. Um, and so I'm glad that those videos can help. Today, I want to talk about a few books that really helped me. And those books are all centered around trauma. They're all by doctors, professionals. It's, it's very Western medicine heavy. And at the same time, there's that deep understanding of how to work with trauma on a level that conveys a lot of empathy, a lot of acceptance, a lot of compassion, a lot of, I don't want to say softness, but it is softness. It, it's, it's not purely factual in a way that can be difficult for traumatized people to go through. So I'm going to talk about those books. I'm going to present them. I'm going to present what I learned from them. And all of those books are, they're not textbooks. They're not theses. They're actually healing books with experiences, with case studies, but also with exercises, 
with tips and this is what I live for. I live for receiving tips and giving tips. I, I just need, it's like a video game, I need to know how I can get past the Grotto in Pokemon. I need you to tell me where I can find the Flash so that I can have some light in that Grotto. So <laughs> give me a CS Flash boost. Um, let's go with those trauma healing books. So the first book is called Waking the Tiger by Peter A. Levine. And that book, it's, it's the one that if you were to read any of those books, just read that one and or start with that one. It's going to be, it's going to be the perfect landing pad for you to start that journey again. Like, you know, we, it's, it's always like picking up the journey, having a rest, continuing that life and then entering a deeper layer of that and then, you know, all of that. So trauma, we know that trauma leaves deep scars. Trauma is something that exists within your present, even though it's from the past. It's, it can be anything. It can be anything that has shocked you, that has, that has shocked you and continues to affect, to have consequences on your life. And it's, it's deeply possible to heal from trauma and there are many many different ways and this book shows you that there's a lot of power in your body because what has been proven is that trauma is not mental or emotional only it's also something that resides in your physical being it's physiological so when we have those responses, the fight, flight, freeze, or phone, a lot of, we always talk about fight and flight. We never talk about the two others. This is a survival mechanism. It's always done in a way for you to survive. If you're fighting, that's because you're embodying a more aggressive version of you that is able to say back off to the person, to threaten, to make someone be afraid of crossing boundaries again so that you can survive the the flight is the same sometimes the threat is too big we need to run away the freeze is a very natural response that happens in a lot of us that happens in animals and it's really a really really smart way of surviving so something happens and your whole body tenses up and you freeze and you're frozen you're like an ice cube this happens and should not be shamed because it's really it's it's not just like the understanding that it's a lack of ability to fight for yourself or to run away it's really just one of the ways that we deal with this as well as phoning which is giving compliments and and people pleasing and it's a way to protect yourself so none of those should be shamed ever the freeze one is actually something that animals use a lot in in a situation where there's a predator they freeze they fall to the ground and and their body really just stops everything so it looks like you're dead like the animal is dead and so the predator can move away or if the predator decided to eat you let's say a lion and an and antelope and that freeze response is actually making all of the pathways for possible pain in being, you know, ripped apart by a lion. It, it actually protects the being who is not yet dead from feeling that pain. It, it really dissociates the animal from what is happening so that when you are indeed being attacked, there is no suffering. So it's it's really something that is instinctual that happens. And we, if we understand that we're evolved from animals or that we're just, you know, uh, mammals, this is something that makes sense, that we should freeze in situations where we just don't have anything else. But what has been proven by, um, by this book, what is advanced by this book, by Peter A. Levin, is that when we freeze, we actually freeze up the event and all of the emotions that we could have had, which could have been aggressivity, fear, uh, sadness, um, confusion, all of that really gets crystallized within your being and it should be shaken out. 
those animals, when they enter the freeze response and the danger moves away, they actually shake themselves back to life when the response from their brain has stopped. They really shake, shake, shake it out. So they shake the fear away. They shake all of what had happened within them away. But us as we humans, we don't do that. And so he advances the understanding that if we were to get into that experience and shake and move through your body, you're able to dispel what has been within you. And what has been within you maybe for 20 years, 25 years, 30, so on and so forth. Being in that moment and allowing yourself to shake and allowing yourself to shake and move and, and, and jump on a trampoline or anything else when those things happen. And I know it might be really like a little bit strange for us to feel like that because in society we're not, you know, we would get the side eye a little bit. But I've read this book 18 months ago or yeah, a little bit more than that. And I've allowed myself to really just move, move, move. And you know, light language in a way is, it's a big discussions around that. It's like allowing yourself to express through your body, through your voice, through your being, what is happening within. So allowing myself to shake, and you know, my, you might know that I've been moving so much in this video. It's a freeing of myself and it's a dispelling of the, my, the possible stress and anxiety that is within and it's so 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 helpful so I've gone through a lot of the things that trigger me mentally and emotionally and I've been able to just shake it you know shake my arms or just be able to be like ah oh, you know ah oh. <sighs> you know just breathe loudly express that shake my head and now I see myself do that even with movies so for example i'm watching a movie there's something distressing happening on screen and i'm someone who gets hyper focused so when i'm in the movie i'm in the movie i forget that i'm sitting on a couch watching a tv it's very helpful to see that i'm able to dispel everything when it happens in the moment so that it doesn't come with me later on so this book is like truly a lesson on how to reframe trauma, on how to understand the effects and the real consequences of trauma and giving you different avenues for you to find that tiger that, we, that lives within you, liberate all of the things that have been frozen within you and just truly move on. Like if, if you don't have those within you, then you move on and and that's that's really what i want for everyone so yay so he really says that a traumatized person's nervous system is not damaged it is frozen in a kind of suspended animation and that comes from our reptilian brain like the sensation is the language of the reptilian brain for the reptile conscious choice is not an option that's why we go into those four different ways of reacting and freezing is not a sign of inadequacy or weakness and we shouldn't see it like that we, sh we animals don't see it like that we shouldn't see it like that and that reframing of we're doing everything to survive like we don't have a choice like this is the reptile reptilian brain we, we don't choose to freeze or to fight or to flight and nor should we try to teach ourselves to do that because this is the reptilian brain it just switches to one of those four modes it, ex it 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 is something that is within us that has been within us within our ancestors through millenniums of evolution so this is how we react don't look back and shame yourself about what you did so now is the time to stretch to deep breathe to move to shake to to do sports maybe to go on a walk when when those frozen parts are are either triggered or activated by your conscious choice when you choose that you have a little bit of time to you know meditate or go for a therapy session or anything else that helps i want to read a quote much of the violence that plagues humanity is a direct or indirect result of unresolved trauma that is acted out in repeated unsuccessful attempts to re-establish a sense of empowerment we're trying to find a solution to things that have happened to us in the past or that have happened to our parents, our grandparents, our ancestors. We're constantly 
we're constantly seeking a solution so that we can find a way to feel like we are in control again. This is all we're doing. That book is also very healing because the author keeps on saying trauma is not who you are. It's, it's just not who you are. It's not permanent. You can heal. You can deeply, deeply heal and transform yourself. It, it is possible. And if I can like give a little testament to this, I'm not yet out of my healing journey and it might take my whole life. But I'm so different from who I was last year, the year before, the year before, five years ago, ten years ago. I have so deeply changed and shifted and allowed myself to release, to see myself without the different control narratives that were in, that were donated into my being through repetition, through guys lighting, through hurt, through abuse. I have and I try to open up that window into my being and to witness and to find to find acceptance and to deny what was told to me and to let go and to move on and I hope the same for everyone. I'm going to read another quote. Transformation requires a willingness to challenge your basic beliefs about who you are. We must have the faith to trust responses and sensations that we can't fully understand and a willingness to experience ourselves flowing in harmony with the primitive natural laws that will take over and balance our seemingly incongruous perceptions. Traumatized people must let go of all kinds of beliefs and preconceptions in order to complete the journey back to health. Remember, letting go never happens all at once. Another quote. In renegotiating trauma, we begin to mend the ruptured bank by circling around the peripheries of the healing and trauma vortices, gradually moving towards their center. We begin by riding the warble created by those two opposing forces, experiencing the turbulence between them. We then move slowly and rhythmically back and forth from one to the other in a figure eight pattern. By beginning with the healing vortex, we pick up the support and resources needed to successfully negotiate the trauma vortex. By moving between these vortices, we release the tightly bound energies at their core as if they were being unwound. We move toward their centers and their energies are released. The vortices break up dissolve and are integrated back to the mainstream. Remember my meditation, the eight? Yes. <laughs> I'm gonna put it in the description box and in the cards so that you can go to that one again. It's so healing. It's it's not about Lion's Gate or the eight or whatever. It is truly connecting those two hemispheres of the brain and that middle point, the corpses calypsum, and it's just about this. Connecting one another. And when you cross that threshold through visualizing and moving your eyes, when you cross that threshold, you activate parts of yourself, you heal, you create a flow again. I could talk about this book for hours and this has already been super long. <laughs> I'm just gonna recommend you to read that book. Wake the Tiger. All right, let's move on to the next book, Widen the Window by Elizabeth Stanley. So this book is written by a trauma survivor and neuroscientist. So there's a lot of science to it. As, a, as I said before, this book is, you know, Western medicine heavy. In this book, she explains that trauma is not just a past event that affects us, but a perception of the world. It, it, it's like, it's a state of being that changes how we perceive the world. And she gives us many different tips about, again, the physical body, all of that physiological state of being and how we can both deal with the past, but deal with how we perceive the present through that state of being and how we can connect 
and how we can manage the rising anxiety and panic that might happen and that is through the contact points so the contact points were so helpful and I've actually been using that reality that remembering through a lot of different meditations I've had with my clients and and within my school and it's remembering that you're always in a physical body that is connected to the earth supported by the earth right now I'm sitting on a chair and so I'm actively tapping into the perception that my muscles and my back have of the chair and if I do this a lot and if I remind myself to do it a lot it helps ground me from my very overactive mind that has the propensity to think and panic about the worst case scenario grounding in that sensation is super helpful the author also mentions that stress creates cortisol and how can we dispel cortisol when we're faced with that stress that might happen when we're totally not moving and, and, and just overthinking and going through that moment of difficulty. And she says, contact points, exercise, sports, disperse, you need to disperse that stress response of cortisol through sweating. And so it's, it might be, you know, climbing up the stairs, it might be taking a long walk, it might be breathing deeply. So it might be many things. And it really, really, really helps me now because I realized that at some point in my life two years ago I had panic attacks every week and I had not read that book yet and I wish I had but what I did is that I just walked non-stop I I was in Paris which is a pretty pretty flat area and I was just walking exhausting myself because it would appease the thinking mind so I really recommend following that advice, reading that book and sweating, connecting to your contact points and understanding that you can really change the perception that you have of the world, which means ultimately moving on from what you have known to be true about the world based on what you have experienced, which is very true. But is it helping? The third book is When the Body Says No, The Hidden Cost of Stress by Dr. Gabor Maté. It's, he explores the connection between stress and trauma and medical conditions. So that book is actually more like a textbook. It's difficult to read it. It's, you know, um, I don't recommend it, reading it in one go because it's, it's heavy. It, contain, it contains a lot of uh, cases of cancer and, and terminal illnesses. But there are a few points that are very helpful. So you don't have to read the book. Maybe we can just talk about it right now and that's enough. Because it's a book that is written by all the observation of Gabor Maté. There's a lot of questioning and then discoveries and experiments. And I really love this book because there's so many practical strategies for how to deal with stress and how to build resilience. Because that's, that's what we need when we feel like the world is danger because the world is danger and the world has been danger but it's not always danger there is a need to create resilience and a remembering that we need to really feel sovereign in our being in our reality and that is the work that i did with Sekhmet i really recommend that video about Sekhmet that i delivered to my school and my patreon and i really recommend working with that deity if that's something that calls to you but it really has changed how i stand up for myself, how I honor myself, how I honor my truth and how I deal with life and how I tap into my core instead of looking outside for external validation or external safety. Like I can create my safety now. Anyway, this book is emphasizing the importance of underlying emotional and physical factors that contribute to trauma such as shame, as guilt, as self-blame and it's it's really the layers that can stop us from addressing our trauma because we're constantly criticizing ourselves through it so those understanding of the fact that it's physiological that it stays in the body that we have tried to survive in any way shape or form that we can and it doesn't look like what a marvel hero would do with the cape and the superpowers um it's it's important to see that and to not repress your emotions but be a little bit like an investigator that 
understands and soothes and, and, and tries to go deeper to the root cause, which is very much like shadow work, but also has self-care moments where you can relax and rest and be taken care of or take care of yourself and find a way to feel better, to do better, to be better. He even calls it an attack on the self, which is super interesting. All that shame and guilt and, and blame. and So it's important to remove that so that you can have access and create your own safety within your mind. To conclude, those three books offer so many insights and understanding what trauma is and what it does inside of you is so helpful, but they also offer so many tools, like so many different tools and reminders. And now all you have to do after reading those books or watching this video is practice them. It's not just doing them one time that will heal the whole thing. Healing is not linear. It's, it's that spiral, getting closer to that vortex and slowly moving through. I shared a few of my own practices through the 8-8 meditation, through many different ways that I can help you via my video or via my own services. You can book me for a healing session. And I hope that all of this helped. There's the other side of life. This doesn't need to be something that stays with you forever. This doesn't need to taint your identity and your reality forever. 